Hello everyone, welcome back to Crochet from the Beginning, the Towel Topper series uh, with me, Deborah from Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm attaching my trim color to my hook. We'll do that with a slip knot. Good gravy. Let's see if I can see and do this all at the same time. I have lost all coordination. Okay, as you can see, last time we got to the buttonhole phase and got that put in there. And let me get my needle out of there. This is where we want to start. All the way back at the beginning, where we started our loop-de-loops connecting what will end up being our trim color to the towel, and that's what we crocheted into. That's where we want to attach for our trim. Now, on the very ends of this, I don't like to just start from the front. I do like to give it a little love here on a stitch that you're not going to see. Okay. And yes, it's probably kind of tight from being worked into before. Get a little bit loose. Put it in there. Make sure you have a tail that's long enough to weave in later. And we just want to single crochet into that. That just gets us good and attached to make sure we're not going to have any weird loose stuff hanging out on the front. Like that weird loose string there. Or this one here. Or any of them. Okay. Now from here on out, we are just going to be doing single crochet around the outside edge. And you're right, there are no stitches to use there. So we just do the best we can. Okay. Just kind of space them as evenly as you can. Pull through your loop. Oh, that just looks awful. Okay, I got stuck there. And like I've said in many previous instances of this, it is okay to mess up and pull out some stitches. We all do it. Even the super pros occasionally have to frog something, right? All right. Yeah, I don't like the way that knot is sitting there. So I'm going to get that held behind. It can be a little awkward in these first couple of stitches. You know what? I'm going to go over here to this one. And this is just a matter of there is no set way. You're just trying to tidy things up. And when you tidy things up, you get a nice little edge on it. And this part here on the outside edge isn't really going to be seen. It's going to be wrapped around at the back of the towel, but you still want it to be cleaned up. I'm going to go in here, pull up a loop. And pull through. And like I said, in each row there are no real set stitches on the end, which is why I like even Crystal from Pack a Day, she usually goes around her projects with a single crochet because it does clean it up so nicely. And that's where I got my idea because I've learned a lot from Crystal at Pack a Day. Except for how to get my pad of paper to not disappear, I guess. And my yarn to not roll on the floor. Hey, hey. All right, go around, and these slopes are kind of weird because we have all of these decreases on the side, but we're just going to do the best that we can. And we just try to make it even. And we hope that the cat doesn't attack the skein of yarn that has landed on the floor, which he is now doing. Nope, sorry Oscar, not for you. He thinks that the yarn is for him. I promise you, it is not. And going around these outside edges, it takes practice more than anything else and sometimes luck with what stitches you're finding and how you're making it look. Boy, and that one is just weird because we're going up the slope there. When we get to the straightaway, it is a whole lot easier. But on these slopey bits, you're just like, where do I put my hook? What, is that a stitch, what? Yeah, that, that's pretty much my thought process while I'm doing this. 
and I usually don't vocalize it so much because I'm usually doing this while watching TV with the hubby or something. And he would be like, what are you talking about? You're even crazier than I thought. Which, you know, I will own that, quite honestly, but yeah. I try not to talk to the arm too much while, <laughs> while he's with me in here. Because, yeah, that becomes kind of weird. Okay, now we're heading more towards the straightaway. It's a little bit more even and easier to do. Not saying it's super easy, but it is easier. You don't, try not to just go through one loop. Always try to get two, sometimes more, depending on where you're poking into. Because if you just go through one, that might pull and look a little weird, you know, with the stitches. So, ah, now that I've taken the yarn away from Oscar, he's going to sit up there and stare at me like a supervisor who's trying to manage me, but doesn't know actually what I do in the first place. Does that sound familiar to anybody in the work world? Because that's my life sometimes. Okay. As I'm doing this, just going to let you know, we're, we're just going to keep on going until we get to the top. When we get to the top here, then we got a little bit of fun to do. But, you know, just for a little interest, you don't have to. It's just what I like to do on my towels. Okay. You know, these are just sometimes a fun little towel, a fun little crochet item to have in your arsenal or just to have a few lying around. And yes, I know I have too many loops there. I got to pull it out, but then I got wrapped up in trying to pull out yarn. Um, yes, let's not wrap around a loop. I'm not supposed to. We're doing single crochets, Deborah. Single crochets. Yeah, I talk to myself too. It's when you start answering yourself that you may have a problem. Or if you ask yourself to repeat the question, if you're asking yourself questions. Yeah. But no, if you, if you have a gift, you know, you, oh gosh, I owe so such, such a gift. You know, a teacher or a, you know, somebody like that, that you just want to give them a little something, maybe not a big Christmas present, but hey, here's just a little something I'm thinking of you. Have some cute towels crocheted up for the season, whatever season you're in. You, you always find towels with cute sayings on them. Get those. All right, when we get to the top here, Here's where things get a little bit different just across this top bit, all right? In this corner stitch, we're going to do three single crochets because we're round in that corner. We got to turn all the way around. So, so one, two, three. Remember I said how there's a bit that you don't have to do. You can just single crochet all the way across this if you like. I like to add a little decorative point. So on my next stitch, I'm going to do a half double. Okay. The next two stitches, I'm going to do doubles. Regular roll, loop over, pull through two, Pull for your last two and do it one more time. Then I'm going to do a triple. And I know I haven't done any tutorials on triples. Triples are like yarn eaters, but for something decorative, sometimes for shells and things, you need them. To do a triple, it's almost like a double. Instead of yarning over once, you yarn over twice and you keep that loop there. Then you go into the stitch, pull up a loop. Then you should have four loops on your hook, okay? You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, and yarn over, pull through the last two. See how it's taller than the rest of the stitches, okay? Now we're gonna kinda of do this in reverse. We're going to do two double crochets in the next two stitches. There's my second double crochet. Then we're going to do a half double in this one. Kind of scrunch it down. And then we're going to do three singles in that corner. Which is actually right there. Okay. 
And yes, that tail's going to be in my way, but that's okay. One. A two. And three rounds the corner. Now you see why I've done that? That just adds a neat little point to it. It's just a decorative bit. It's not structurally important or anything. It's just crochet, okay? But I like it, so I do it on my towels. Now, you have a choice here with this tail that was left on your very last row. You can either crochet it in or you can leave it out and weave it in afterwards. This time, because I'm doing this demo, I'm going to leave it out and weave it in afterwards because I don't feel like fighting with it because otherwise I do kind of struggle with it. Uh, but now we're just going to single crochet down this whole side. Again, doing the best you can because they're not really stitches. You just kind of try to space them out evenly. It neatens up your edges a bit. Pulling out some more yarn because I keep getting it wrapped up and I'm in little tight quarters here where my camera is. Okay. And is it perfect? No, not at all. Is that okay? Absolutely. And yes, this is a pad of paper. <laughs> you saw it just slide down. There's the spiral bit on it. Um, real professional setup here. A cell phone and a pad of paper. All right. Hey, we use what we got, right? And my cat is still staring at me. Like a... Uh, a supervisor who does not approve of what I'm doing. Perhaps I'm playing with the yarn wrong. I don't know. Either that or he's hungry and he doesn't just want the food that's in his bowl. He expects me to get up and get him something. Yeah. That is my life sometimes with my teeny boy Oscar. And I say teeny. If you've been around here a while you know he's 18 pounds of teeny. Yeah, but he's very, very sweet and very good natured and loves to be held and loves to purr. So he's a good kitty. Back down to these decrease areas, they get kind of weird and wonky trying to do it. So you just do the best that you can getting that trim color on there. And that is if you decide to do a trim color. You could have stopped and not done any of it. That's actually okay. I like the contrast and bringing that other color up into it. Um, but, you know, there's no hard and set rules. Or there's no crocheting uh, czar that's going to say, no, you must do the color trim. No, that's not a thing. You do what you feel like doing. That is part of what makes this so much fun. See, when I get these ones with the big holes here where we've done a decrease, I sometimes like to grab another piece of the crochet and get it up in there. Probably not very orthodox on what everybody else would do, but I like to do it. I find it kind of fills in that space a little bit better and makes it not leave a little gap. Okay, there's a good space. Sometimes it's all about finding the good space where you want your hook to go, or where your hook wants to go. And look at this. We are about at the end, folks. And I don't want to leave that gaping spot there. So, I'm going to try to go into this stitch here. And yes, I know it's been gone into a few times, so it's kind of full, full as a tick, as my mother-in-law used to say. There we go. 
And now just for giggles, I am going around to the back and going into one more starting stitch there. Just wanna pull that through. Okay. Now I'm gonna tie off, I'm gonna pull up that loop, grab my handy dandy scissors. I mean, that's how it's spelled, that's how we should say it. Snip it, snip it in the bud. That's not how that goes. Okay. And uh, tighten that down. Now, I know I haven't weaved the, end, the ends in yet. I know I haven't attached the button. But this is basically what we've got. See how these will curl under naturally because of the decreases? I don't know. It's impossible to see at this really close camera angle. But there we are. This is like a super close up. And then I will put the button... I know the colors don't seem to match here, but in person, they actually are dead on. Um, the button will go underneath and we'll button right through that buttonhole. That three space buttonhole works for these buttons. That's why I do what I do right there. Um, I'm going to pause it, weave in the ends, and show you the final product. So be a second for you, be a few minutes for me. Okay, these are my little scraps from where I have weaved in my ends and cut them off. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. And this is the finished towel. Now you're not interested in the towel itself, but that is the whole size of the towel. This will fit nicely on just about any uh, stove handle that you've got or even on the fridge. And here's the back. This is what the back looks like. See, there's the, the, the stuff from cutting the towel in the first place because I didn't put any more holes in it by using my needle because I used that blunt needle to put it in. There you go. That is the towel topper the way I do it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, like I said, I'm not a pro. I'm just a beginner crocheter. and I kind of found a way of doing it that I like. And I use the contrasting color on the inside of my button. You could, of course, use the same color. You can just arrange your colors however you want. I just kind of like that extra little pop of something different. I like it to be real, real colorful. If I'm going to use a super colorful towel like this, I'm going, woo, colorful here. And apparently I'm knocking my camera all over the place. Not a good idea, I know. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for participating in Crochet from the Beginning. If you have anything else you'd like me to attempt to uh, show you how I do it, let me know because I'm happy to help a new crochet along because I'm a beginner myself. Thank you so much. Please check the description down below and uh, I will see you soon. Bye now.